The wilderness and dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. Well, welcome to our service today. And today we've reached the letter K. And K stands for Kedron. Well, we'll begin our service with a hymn which Laura will play for us. today will be given for us by Mary. The reading is taken from John chapter 18 verses 1 to 9 of the New International Version. When he had finished praying, Jesus left with his disciples and crossed the Kidron Valley. On the other side there was an olive grove and he and the disciples went into it. Now Judas, who betrayed him, knew the place because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas came to the grove guiding a detachment of soldiers and some officials from the chief priests and Pharisees. They were carrying torches, lanterns and weapons. Jesus, knowing all that was going on to happen to him, went out and asked them, Who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. I am he, Jesus said. And Judas the traitor was standing there with them. When Jesus said, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, Who is it you want? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. I told you that I am he, Jesus answered. If you are looking for me, then let these men go. This happened so that the words he had spoken would be fulfilled. I have not lost one of those you gave me. This is the word of the Lord. Well, K is for Kedron. 
Now, admittedly, Kedron is not a word we use every Sunday. Uh, indeed, it may be unfamiliar to many people. And even if you recognize the word Kedron, uh, you might be wondering just how on earth it connects with our denominational history or identity. Well, this alphabetical survey is not just about the key people or places or ideas. It's also about things we have in our churches which are interesting or unusual or striking. And Kedron ties in uh, with one of those. Because here in Dan Patrick, we have something that's linked to Kedron or Kidron as it's also uh, spelt. Now, Kedron is a valley uh, near Jerusalem. It's a valley that runs north to south uh, to the east of Jerusalem between the city and the Mount of Olives. Now, it's a place that's mentioned in the Bible. It's mentioned a number of times in the Old Testament, although it's only mentioned once in the New Testament, only mentioned once by name. But it does feature uh, quite a lot uh, in, in the Bible. And the link comes uh, to this church from some of the memorials in the churchyard. In 1978, Professor James Stevens Curl uh, produced a short book for the Ulster Architectural Heritage Society, a short book entitled Mausolea in Ulster. And he had a lot to say about the Mausolea in this part of the world. Uh, but he also says uh, about uh, two uh, mausolea in our churchyard here. There are two memorials of square bases with panelled sides, surmounted by pyramids having concave sides derived from early mausolea in the Kedron Valley, Jerusalem. So, Professor Curl certainly thinks our two memorials, our two tombs uh, of this design, are based on tombs in the Kedron Valley. Now, the only mention of Kedron or Kidron uh, in the New Testament is in John's Gospel, in the passage uh, which Mary read for us before. But Jesus must have known the Kedron Valley very well. He will have traversed it many times when he went out to Bethany. And it was very close to the city. And if you went across uh, to the Mount of Olives, you went across uh, the Kedron Valley. Indeed, if you went to the Garden of Gethsemane, you also had to cross the Kedron Valley. So we know that when uh, Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray, he was on the edge and will have crossed the Kedron Valley. And indeed, when Jesus was arrested, as we heard in our reading from John's Gospel before, he was in uh, the Garden of Gethsemane and he had crossed the Kedron Valley to get there. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples across the Kidron Valley where there was a garden. So we know that this was very close to Jerusalem. It was very uh, central uh, to the Bible and to the, a lot of the Bible stories and to the Gospels. Now, in the Kedron Valley, there are a number of memorials, as Professor Curl suggests. Now, one of them is called the Tomb of Absalom. And this is a large uh, tomb, a Jewish tomb from the Roman period, hewn out of rock. And the construction of this monument is mentioned in the book uh, of Samuel. Now, it's very, very tall. It's 22 metres high, so it's very, very large. And it's the most ornate monument in uh, the Kedron or Kidron Valley. It's hewn out of the limestone rock face. And it has, uh, one uh, guidebook says, an elegant pinnacle shaped like a Moroccan tagine cooking pot. So it's something like uh, our concave uh, monuments here in Downpatrick. But whereas they are sort of concave and have four faces on them, 
uh, this is more rounded. There's also the tomb of Zechariah, which is a few meters further south. And a guide says, this freestanding cube carved out of bedrock is decorated on each side with ionic columns and is topped by a sharply pointed pyramid. So there we've got two possible designs, uh, which may be suggestive of our memorials. But it's interesting to think, isn't it, that when we uh, walk up the hill to our meeting house here, when we go past these two ancient mausolea, we see designs that perhaps were inspired by the Kedron Valley, that perhaps had their root in designs from maybe 2,000 years ago or more, uh, from Roman times uh, in Israel. Now there are, you might recognise the word Kedron from a couple of hymns, because there are two hymns in our hymn book, in our hymn book, Hymns of Faith and Freedom, which were also in the previous books, Hymns of Worship, Hymns of Worship Revised. There are two hymns which mention Kedron. And the first is number 150 in Hymns of Faith and Freedom, which is written by A.P. Stanley, a Victorian hymn, and he was uh, a Victorian Anglican uh, clergyman. I think he was the Dean of Westminster, and he was a very broad church uh, churchman. And this hymn, this hymn reads as follows. When the paschal evening fell deep on Kedron's hallowed dell, when around the festal board sat the apostles with their Lord, then his parting word he said, Bless the cup and break the bread. This, where'er you do or see, evermore remember me. So this is a hymn written by A.P. Stanley about communion, about the origins of communion. And he's written this hymn to try and extend the notion of communion, to be fully inclusive of everybody, which is a very interesting idea. Uh, although he sort of locates, seems to locate the Last Supper to the Kedron Valley, which isn't, isn't normally the case. But there we have the first mention of Kedron in one of our hymns. And the other one is number 154. And this is a hymn written by James Martineau, of course, the most prominent of uh, Unitarian theologians in the 19th century. Number 154. And this may be slightly better known than the other one. Uh, but this hymn also mentions Kedron, again spelt Kedron, not Kidron. But James Martineau writes, A voice upon the midnight air, where Kedron's moonlit waters stray, weeps forth in agony of prayer, O oh, Father, take the cup away. So again, this is rooted to Jesus' prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane, in the night before he was crucified. Famously in the Garden of Gethsemane, but also in the Valley of Kedron, the place that inspired two of the monuments in our churchyard. Well, let's join together now in the fellowship of prayer. Let us pray. Spirit of love and gentleness, shed abroad in our hearts the cheering light of your grace. You know our faults, our failings, our necessities, the dullness of our understanding, the waywardness of our affections, the perverseness of our will. When we neglect to practice what we know, visit us with your grace, enlighten our minds, rectify our desires, correct our wanderings, so that, guided by your grace, we may be preserved from making shipwreck of faith and at length be landed safe in the haven of eternal rest. These and all our prayers we ask in Jesus' name, who taught us when we pray to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. 
Well, thank you for joining with us in our service today. And thank you to Laura for playing the organ for us. And thank you to Mary for giving the reading for us today. And in a moment, Laura will play us out with our final hymn. But we'll close now with the benediction. Let us pray. The peace which passeth understanding, the peace of God, which the world can neither give nor take away, be among us and abide in our hearts, this day and evermore. Amen.